So hello guys, welcome back to our channel. This is going to be the episode eight of the placement series, and in this in this video, we'll be talking about the company Microsoft. Yes, you got me right. This is going to be the video about Microsoft. One of the third year student cracked an internship in Microsoft, so we will be discussing about each and everything in detail. So I would suggest you to watch the video till the end so that you don't miss out anything. So without any further delay, let's begin with the video. Okay, so hi Devansh. First of all, welcome to my channel. Hope you're doing good. Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. How about you? I'm also doing good. Thanks, brother. So let's start with the basic intro of yours. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Devansh. I'm currently in third year CSE core. And yeah, I'll be starting my position as an associate consultant intern at Microsoft uh, this summer. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Okay, that's really uh, great to know about you. And first of all, congratulations for cracking Microsoft. Thank you. So it's a big deal. So uh, Devansh, basically, it was an on-campus opportunity or off-campus opportunity? Uh, it was an on-campus opportunity. Uh, our faculty advisor had uh, sent us the Google form link, and everyone okay. had to fill the form. And we also had to apply on the company portal. Uh, so yeah, after uh, filling the Google form, uh, we got the response after around 20 days from okay. the placement office. Okay, getting your point. So first of all, let's talk about the eligibility criteria. What was the eligibility criteria for the company? Uh, so yeah, there was only one criteria. It was 8C GPA. Uh, there was okay. no such criteria as 10th or 12th percentage. Uh, 8C GPA in your BTEC degree. Uh, were they asking any kind of certification like Salesforce or something else or something like that? Uh, no, no. In the Google form, they asked about like what kind of certifications we have done, uh, what are the skills that we know, uh, like if we have done some certifications on Coursera or any other platform, so we had to submit those. Correct, correct, correct. So, to, in, in uh, uh, um, total, like how many rounds were there, like from the pre -pres PPT presentation till the time you got your offer? In and all, how many rounds you give? Okay, so first there was a pre-placement talk uh, in which they told the basics about the company, what will be the job role and Correct. So there were okay. there were two job roles. One it was an associate consultant job role, which is my role, and one is a one was a project management job role. So uh, yeah, so that was the first round. After that, uh, we had submitted our resumes on their uh, website, like the Microsoft Careers website. So it, there was a resume shortlisting round in which they shortlisted 29 people totally based on the okay. uh, resumes 15 were from project management and 14 were for associate consultant uh, so yeah so after the resume shortlisting round we directly had our technical interview uh, so uh, that so techni uh, technical interview was the first round and then we had a managerial round yes. okay so basically let's talk about the technical round first so what kind of questions did they ask and what was the level? So let's talk about that. Okay, sure. Uh, so the questions that were asked to me first, like they asked a basic intro of mine. Uh, then uh, they then like they moved on to the resume. They had my resume on their screen. Uh, okay. So they asked about the projects that I've done. Uh, I had to explain any three or four projects. So I explained each project for like around three minutes each. Um, I told what are, what are, what is the project about, what are the tools I've used, what are the libraries I've used in those projects, and what are the libraries, libraries generally used for. So basically I told the basics about um, all my all the projects that I made. Uh, so after, after this, uh, uh, the interviewer asked me about the OOPS concept, the four pillars of OOPS. So I explained all of them in detail. I took like around four minutes for each of the four pillars. Uh, so yeah, I thought like, uh, the more I explain with examples, the better it will be. Uh, so I took my time. I thought of examples that I can present in front of the interviewer and, uh, yeah, I, I told in detail how each of the concept works. Uh, I, I gave various examples. Like if I make a class and I inherit it. Uh, so yeah, I, I gave basic, basic examples so that interviewer gets to know that I know the topic in detail. That was the main motive. Uh, so after the OOPS concept, she asked me if I know DBMS or not, but DBMS has, hadn't been taught to us in the college till that time. So I just told that I don't have a lot of idea, but I can write basic SQL queries. Uh, 
so mm-hmm. she she said it's not a problem uh, then uh, she moved on to the coding part so basically i had to share my it was a virtual interview so i had okay. to uh, share my screen and uh, uh, she told me to open notepad and then she gave me two questions to code um, it was there were there were two very basic questions one was uh, she gave me a series and i had to identify the series it was a fibonacci series and i had to write a code for the uh, fibonacci series Okay. Um, so yeah, I solved I solved it in around four minutes. It was it was easy code. Like Fibonacci is a very easy code. So yeah, uh, and she analyzed the code and she she told that the code's correct. Then we moved on to the next uh, coding part, and that was a palindrome string question. That's also a, a basic code itself. Uh, so yeah, I had to code it on Notepad. Um, at the first. She did not understand my approach. I mean, uh, it was not very clear the way I explained okay. it. Uh, but she told me her approach. I understood it. But then I again told her what approach I have used, and then it was more clear to her. And like my approach was also correct. Even her approach was correct. So uh, she said it's good. Uh, and then uh, after that, she asked uh, DSA questions. Started with DSA. She asked DSA in deep. There were no DSA coding questions. The, the only two questions were theoretical, basically yeah, yeah. theoretical questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So she asked about like uh, what are the differences between arrays and linked list? How will I create a linked list? Um, and uh, then like she asked about trees. She asked about red black trees. What are the properties of red black trees? Uh, then she asked searching and sorting techniques. She told me to explain binary search in detail. Uh, I told her whatever I know about binary search. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, she asked me about uh, merge sort, like how it works, what's the time complexity and all. So okay. I told her about merge sort, like what are the steps involved in merge sort, time complexity, everything. Um, yeah, that was all. That was uh, most okay. most of it. That was a really descriptive one, I guess. Like yeah. you talked about each and each what kind of questions were asked in a very detailed manner. That's very good. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the HR round. What what uh, what questions were asked and. It was it. I I think it might be an easy one as you cross the yeah. technical one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was a not exactly an HR round. It was a managerial round, technical managerial round. Okay. So okay. Okay. first, uh, he gave a basic intro of mine. He made me feel comfortable for the first five to seven minutes. Like he asked about where do I live, what what are my hobbies, uh, like basic introduction. Um, he asked me a basic like he asked me a question like uh, why did you prefer SRM over uh, other colleges, other uh, colleges. Okay. while joining. So I told him, yeah, I took references from my seniors. I checked various websites. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Then after that, uh, it was like, he, he, he also had my resume open in his screen. Uh, so he told me to explain any one project in detail. So it was kind of different from the previous round because in the previous round, the inter- interviewer asked me to explain two or three projects. So I explained okay. each, each of them for like three minutes, but this one, he asked me to explain one project in detail. So I explained that one project for 20 to 25 minutes. So I explained whatever I knew about that project uh, in detail so that the interviewer gets to know that it's my own project and I haven't taken it from okay. somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of times some projects from in the resumes are copied from somewhere okay. and that's not right. So uh, I explained whatever I knew about the project for like 20 to 25 minutes, uh, mm-hmm. whatever I have used, what is, what's the progress of the project, how much is completed, uh, everything I explained to, to him in detail. Uh, yeah, that was the first part of the interview. Uh, then after that, uh, he asked me like, what are the challenges I faced while doing that specific project? Um, so I told him that, uh, see, so it was a project of like a traffic sign recognition project using ULO. So, okay. uh, um, in that, basically, you're supposed to get a very high accuracy because even if there's a small error, the car can, it can, you know, make a blunder. Uh, so it's important to have around approximately hundred percent accuracy. But we were, we hadn't reached hundred percent accuracy at that time. It was we were getting around ninety five or ninety six. So that's, uh, I told him that this is a challenge that we are facing as of now because our accuracy should be hundred. Uh, yeah. So. After that, he the the second question he asked was a puzzle. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it he t- before the puzzle he told me that don't worry about the end result. This puzzle won't impact the result of this interview. So uh, he he just wanted to check my logic building skills and my thinking capability. So it was a basic puzzle. You can you can find it on uh, 
geeks for geeks you can find the solution there but i couldn't solve the puzzle completely basically it was he gave me a situation where i had to get the time complexity down to uh, o of 2 but i tried a lot and i got it down till o of 3 but i couldn't get till o, it in uh, o of 2 so yeah uh, then he explained it to me that this is the way yeah i just uh, couldn't reach the final answer for it uh, yeah and then uh, that's where the interview got over um uh, he i asked him uh, how was my interview what did he feel about my interview and he said yeah i was confident uh, i have good logic building skills and uh, he told that the hr will get back to me and we got the results that day itself my interview got over around 6 pm and the results came at around 9:40 9:45 pm so totally for for my role uh, out of 14 people they selected 3 Uh, I was one of them. Uh, so yeah, that's that was really later. great to know. So uh, Devas, as you told, right, that resume played a vital role. Yeah. Because in each of the technical round plus managerial round, your uh, resume was one thing that was playing the major role. In, yes. In that also your projects thing, right? So how yeah. did you manage being in third year? How did you manage to build such a resume? Like what all references you took? from where you got those project ideas so let's talk about some of the resume tips that you would like to give okay so it's basically a it's a basic it's basically a continuous process you can't build a good resume overnight right. you have to start working from your first year you know first years are they are very enthusiastic uh, they get distracted easily uh, you can you, you can uh, you know get distracted very easily in your first year you either you start focusing on your studies or you can go in the wrong direction uh, so if you start preparing from your first semester or maybe not first semester even if you start preparing from your second semester mm-hmm. uh, you start building a good resume you add more and more skills into your resume learn more tools and technologies uh, so by the end of third year i think you'll have a great resume but you have to do it continuously it's not like okay i'll start web development today i'll, I'll stop it after a month that's not how it works uh, you have to learn continuously you have to keep updating your resume continuously your resume can't be the same for a year you have mm-hmm. to keep changing it you have to keep adding more technologies which you have learned so that that plays an important role in building a good resume um you can you you know people say that app dev- uh, web development is not a good domain everyone's doing web development but it's not like that you know i have a lot of friends who are doing web development and they're doing great in that my resume personally was based on artificial intelligence i had taken up courses from coursera um udemy and i had uh you know taking up courses from uh, coursera and udemy is just 10% of your learning you learn 90% of the things when you start building your projects so i think yeah you have to implement what you've learned because they will teach you the theory and that that won't be enough so uh yeah so when you you can build your first first project by getting references from youtube or from any course but after that i think you have to build your projects by um, on your own copying okay. from somewhere won't help uh, you know people saying that okay i'll watch a video i'll understand how it works but that that won't help um, you have to start implementing what you've learned on your own you have to get ideas uh, on your own um, yeah and that's how you can you can build good projects so you'll also get a better understanding about your project so that if the interviewer ask you asks you you can explain it in detail um, so yeah that that's how i built my resume so there was you were talking about the technologies and the skills right so what yes. kind of skills would you suggest that are really uh, demanded by the industry nowadays and that really helped you a lot also to stand out from the crowd okay so you know um, i mean uh, microsoft i think all the three people that they selected had a resume based on artificial intelligence okay. because that's what is trending these days um you can start artificial intelligence in your second semester itself mm. and it's not something really tough if you if you start from the second semester itself and you learn continuously i think by the end of third year it will be will be great uh so taking up courses from coursera learning the important topics noting down the important topics and then implementing the things that you've learned into your projects uh, will definitely help so i think artificial intelligence is a is a really good uh, field in which uh, freshers can get into or even if you're in second year you can start with artificial intelligence it's not too late honestly uh, second year is still early 
uh, I mean, you still have a lot of time. You have one full year or maybe two full years to prepare your resume. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what I would suggest that you can start with AI or blockchain. You any field, whatever you st- whatever you take up, you try to complete it. I mean, um, start starting something and then uh, leaving it in in the middle and then jumping onto some other topic. It will it will not help. Uh, like yeah. I started artificial intelligence in my second year for the first semester of second year, and I'm still continuing in that field itself. So yeah, uh, that's how I think. Yeah, that's all. Correct, correct, correct. So uh, there weren't any such tips that you think if you might have got from your seniors that can be a add on to your uh, interview part. Any such tips or which you thought ki okay, this is what I've experienced and. This is what a fresher should know, or someone who is about to give their interview should know. Okay, so first of all, I think the senior junior interaction is in SRM is not very great. That's what I feel. I mean, mm-hmm. the juniors don't talk to their seniors, and even the seniors don't come up to their juniors to offer help. That's what I have experienced till now. Mm-hmm. So, what I would suggest the juniors is to go and talk to your seniors and seek help from them. Ask. And they will help, of course. If I mean, if they are your friends, they will help. That's what I did. I approached my senior uh, when I was in second year. So he told me to start practicing DSA. Um, like I was, I was already clear with some of the topics that were taught in class. Uh, so what I did was I started practicing on Lead Code and other platforms. Like you can, you can start Hacker Rank, Code Chef, anything, whatever you like. Code Chef is comparatively easier, but mm-hmm. Lead Code is a very good platform according to me. Um, you can start. Practicing on that, uh, and uh, try to do one minimum one question every day. No matter whatever is the situation, where wherever you are, even if you're at your home, don't try to break. Don't break that streak. Do one question every day, and by the end of two or three months, you'll find yourself at a very good place. You'll you'll be uh, skilled in a in in a lot of departments. Uh, you know, Lead Code has has a lot of questions, a large variety of questions. Um, even if you start from the easy level for the first month, hmm. uh, you can go to the medium level from the second or the third month, and it'll it'll be good because usually in interviews they ask easy to medium level problems. It's rare that they ask hard level problems. So yeah, that's what the one suggestion that I'll give to my juniors is: start practicing DSA problems, and side by side try to focus on your projects as well. Any you can start any one development topic like web development, app development, AI, blockchain, anything, which can be suitable for your resume. And I really like one point what Devan said that the su- uh, senior G- uh, junior interaction, right? So through this video also, I would like to tell ki, guys to connect with your seniors. They are, they, this thing will really help you out. We also connected with many of our seniors and that really helped from uh, their end also. So start connecting not only your seniors, but your fellow mates or other department people also. You'll find a number of great minds out here and you can surely connect with them. And Devan uh, spoke each and everything in a very detailed manner. I think he explained very uh, each and everything in a very great uh, part. So for, once again, thank you for that Devan. And with this, we come to the end of the video. I hope each and everything is cleared out. And if you have any query related to how Devan's cracked or how he prepared for any other stuff, he's more than happy to help you out. I'll be giving his LinkedIn uh, profile on the description part. You can surely connect with him. And for any other queries, you can surely connect with us also on our Instagram, Telegram, or as well as on our comment section. We are more than happy to help you guys. So with this, uh, don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel. So let's end the video. Thank you guys.